Welcome back to the Urban Farmyard, where this city girl goes country. You may have seen on the news this week that there has been an explosion in cat flu this season, and unfortunately, despite getting through the first few months of kitten season without any illness at all, we have now succumbed to cat flu as well. Don't panic if you're adopting from us, all our kittens are being treated, but I wanted to just take you along with me and show you what happens when we do end up with an outbreak of cat flu. Unfortunately for me, it involves an awful lot more work. So let's get into it, let's go and attend to and medicate some kittens and we'll take you along with my day. <laughs> to do each morning is cut up doxycycline tablets. You will recognize doxycycline, it's a human drug which is also used in the treatment of cat flu. These drugs unfortunately don't come in kitten sized portions so we need to take these full tablets and we need to cut them into eight pieces for our tiny little ones and four pieces for our slightly bigger cats. With that done, it's now time to come in and clean the quarantine area that we've set up for our sick little ones. Previously, we had been using this particular room as our kitten nursery, but what we've ended up doing is isolating the kittens that are perfectly well in a different area, and we've turned the kitten nursery into our quarantine space. It's really important for us to quarantine any sick kittens because what we don't want is for cat flu to go through absolutely every kitten that we have here on site. This is a virus that is is very very infectious it is transmitted through the air just through sneezes and wheezes and so all it takes is for a cat to sneeze and for somebody else to catch it so what I do each day is I come through and I clean the entire quarantine area and each time I finish cleaning a cage I then go through and I medicate the kittens in that cage each kitten at the beginning of their treatment needs to be medicated twice a day so that's a lot of work with the number of kittens that we've got on site I'm medicating probably a hundred kittens every single day, in fact twice a day at the beginning of their treatment. Once they get five days into their treatment we then knock that back to just medicating once a day, but getting pills into a hundred kittens once or twice a day is a lot of work and I've got to say my hands are feeling it. I've been bitten numerous times and unfortunately the fingers that have been bitten are the same fingers which then need to pop pills down other little throats the next day, so my little grazers are being scraped every single time I medicate a kitten. But it's worth it because what we don't want is for these little ones to pass away. So let's go and start cleaning and we'll then start medicating. Here we have kitten number one. Now I find the easiest way to medicate these little guys is to scruff them behind the neck. That causes them to go limp and they're less likely to fight you when you're getting a pill into their mouth. Now this little guy is about two kilograms so we're going to give him one quarter of a tablet which I cut up earlier. Just like that, one down. 99 to go. I'm not going to show you me doing every single one of them because quite frankly we're going to be here all day. To give you an indication of just what cat flu can do, have a look at this little dot's eyes. The inner eyelids are completely swollen across the eye. You can see all that red puffiness. Now, this will go down with antibiotics, but, but it is one of the very common symptoms that we see, and it must be really sore for these little ones. Poor little poppet. Wouldn't you know it? I've been bitten. This is one of the challenges with one of the teeny tiny little kittens. One of the groups that we've got in here are about three or four hundred grams and so they're really little and they've got tiny little mouths and so getting an adult sized finger, even though I've got quite small or narrow fingers, getting a finger down their little throats with a tablet is hard and this is what happens. Now I'm doing this with what, a hundred kittens twice a day, every single day so I'm pretty experienced with pill giving but 
it still happens. So this is going to make doing everybody else a lot of fun today. This is one of the other side effects of cat flu, extreme weight loss. You can see this little guy is skin and bone. He's lost, I would assume based on his physical frame, he's probably lost about half of his body weight. What happens when kittens have got cat flu is, just like humans, they don't feel very well. They're all congested, they can't smell their food, and they just don't feel hungry. And so unfortunately, they often just stop eating, which leads to extreme weight loss like this little guy who's come into us. So what I need to do with these little ones is I need to syringe feed them. I need to force food into them in order to ensure that they don't die. Now the particular product we give them is Royal Cannon Recovery. Now, uh, this is about $4.50 per little tin. It's not cheap, but we can't just give these little guys supermarket food when they're in this state. This is a really nutrient-dense, high-energy food, which is going to help this little guy to feel better more quickly and hopefully mean that he survives. So what I've done is I've mixed this together with some water into a liquidy, pasty thing and filled a syringe, and I'm going to sit here and feed this little guy. Feeding them is a really slow process. He doesn't really want to eat, so he's going to take his time swallowing each mouthful. So each time I give him part of the syringe, I need to wait until he's swallowed, which he has just done now, and then I'm going to give him a tiny bit more. Honestly, we're giving him maybe two mils at a time. While I've got this little guy here, I'm also going to check his levels of hydration. These little guys often become very dehydrated as well. So how we test for dehydration is we're going to give them a pinch test. So we're going to pull their skin up and you can see there it's maintained a hump. So that's an indication that he's dehydrated, which means we're going to need to go and give him some subcutaneous fluids. So let's go do that now. So what I have here is a syringe which I've just filled with a saline solution. Now this is something that our vet provides for us for treating little ones who really do need a lot more attention in order to get them back up and running. So saline solution, 20 mils with a needle on the end and we're going to go and inject this underneath the skin. This is then going to absorb into the body throughout the day and help to rehydrate this little one. You may be able to see here, you can see a bit of a lump here. So this is where the fluid's gone. What I've done is I've put 10 mils in either side alongside the rib cage and gradually those lumps will go down during the day as his body reabsorbs that saline solution. Among the little ones that we're currently treating is a group of newborn kittens. Now these guys were born here and they had never been exposed to cat flu in the outdoors. So how did they get it? Well, this is, a, this is something that we find quite frequently. Newborn kittens can get cat flu if their mum's a carrier. Once a cat has got cat flu in their system, they can pass it on to their newborns. And so we could see as soon as these little babies opened their eyes, that mums were carriers of cat flu and they had passed it on to their newborns. Their eyes were gummed shut when they should be opening nice and clearly. And as you can see with this little guy, his eyes are now nice and bright and wide open because he's been on medication for 10 days now. This is why it's so important to desex and vaccinate your cats. These little guys shouldn't have been born. There was a family that had two cats that weren't desexed, and so both fell pregnant and both have had babies. They also weren't vaccinated, which meant they succumbed to cat flu, they carried it in their system, and they then passed it on to their little ones. Two of these babies simply didn't make it. Their little systems weren't strong enough to fight cat flu, but we have managed to save the rest of them. Now, the product I'm using with these little guys is slightly different. Again, it's doxycycline, 
but it's in a paste form. We need to use the paste form for our little ones because we simply can't get tablets that are small enough to go into newborn infants. So this I'm basically dosing on a chopstick, tiny little amount like that. I'm going to lift the little baby up. Cradle him like this and just swipe that onto his tongue. Now this product is not actually designed for newborns but the risk we had was to either let them die of cat flu or risk them getting some sort of toxic poisoning caused by the drug. So we've opted to medicate them and run that risk and as you can see it's worked really well and these little ones are looking really good. I'm going to show you another one from the litter though who's not looking quite so good who still needs to be on medication for a little bit longer. Here's the one who's not looking quite so good. As you can see the little eyes are really gummy and still weeping. So what I'm going to do with this little dot is I'm going to bathe these eyes and then I'm going to medicate him. a little bit better. All done. This little dot has eyes which are even worse. Take a look at this. Poor little soul, really, really swollen in her eyelid. So what I'm going to do with this little one is I have already given them antibiotics. I'm also going to provide a dose of Metacam, which is an anti-inflammatory, which is going to help with the pain and also help to reduce the swelling in that eyelid. It is now 1.51 p.m. It has taken all morning just to do the quarantine space. So that is a full clean, feeding, changing litter trays and medicating kittens. But I'm not done yet. Despite the fact that we have all the kittens with cat flu in quarantine, I still need to medicate the ones who are in the rescue centre. Now the reason for that is because we're seeing so much cat flu at the moment, we are medicating any kittens that have potentially come into contact with cat flu as a precaution. So these are cats that are not showing any symptoms, but we know have very likely been exposed. So I am going to go up to the rescue center and medicate another 100 kittens. Not what I really want to be doing this afternoon, but we have no choice, it has to be done, so let's go and do it. So I hope you found today interesting and I'll see you back here tomorrow.